I want to start this conversation off by playing a montage we put together of Democrats talking about freedom. Honored to have been asked to speak on tonight's theme about what matters most to me, to you, and all of us Americans. Freedom. Protecting your freedom. Your freedom to vote. Your freedom to love who you love. And your freedom to choose. Reproductive freedom. Because in Minnesota, we respect our neighbors and the personal choices they make. And even if we wouldn't make those same choices for ourselves, we've got a golden rule. Mind your own damn business. And that includes IVF and fertility treatments. For them, freedom means that the powerful can do pretty much what they please. Whether it's fire workers trying to organize a union or put poison in our rivers or avoid paying taxes like everybody else has to do. Well, we have a broader idea of freedom. We believe in the freedom to provide for your family if you're willing to work hard. Because this is a big part about what this election is about. Freedom. When, Re when Republicans use the word freedom, they mean that the government should be free to invade your doctor's office. Corporations, free to pollute your air and water. And banks, free to take advantage of customers. But when we Democrats talk about freedom, we mean the freedom to make a better life for yourself and the people that you love. Freedom to make your own health care decisions. And yeah, your kids' freedom to go to school without worrying about being shot dead in the hall. Okay, Jane, what do you think of the Democrats talking the language of freedom? I think it is rhetorically intelligent. I think that um, one of the things about either convention is that the conventions are not supposed to be like, ah, we're having a constitutional convention where we're going to hash out all these big. No, it's like an advertisement. Mm -hmm. It's an advertisement for people who are not paying that close of attention, um, which is kind of funny because the people who watch it on X are like politics dorks and it's the funniest thing to like observe people on twitter like observing the conventions like theater critics i'm like go go outside get get <laughs> go watch a movie i don't know but um i think it's rhetorically intelligent i think that and, and i want to separate that from like because i'm aware that you know obviously there's a lot of like policy differences that we can get into here but i think rhetorically it is very smart to be the people who are like we are normal moms and dads who love football, freedom, and faith, and we want to keep your freedoms intact, and these other strange people over here don't want to do that. And I think, again, rhetorically, that is a fantastic claim to make. Like, when you have thousands of people at a convention chanting USA and talking about freedom and, ta and you know, bringing on like members of uh, Governor Waltz's former football team on stage. It genuinely, like rhetorically and visually, I think that is effective messaging. That does not mean that it is accurate or 100% true. Just as the RNC, like bringing on folks who are, you know, who have, um, I think at the RNC, like you see the same kind of thing of like talking about freedoms and faith and talking about how um, Democrats are standing in the way of both of those things. Like, again, it's rhetorically effective. Do you think that Democrats will be able to pull off this rebrand successfully, in part because people have sort of proven that politically and electorally they have weirdly short memories with regard oh, to COVID? Yeah. I yep. mean, because if you think about like the weird moment we're in, like when I think about Democrats, I think about like the gun grabbers who kind of want to deny me school choice, which is like a freedom that I boy, like sure would like to exercise for my own kid um, and would like other people to have the ability to exercise too. 
And then I think about like OSHA vaccine mandates and the fact that like my beloved city, New York, was making it so that you had to get vaccinated and you had to deal with all kinds of weird capacity restrictions and business owners had onerous restrictions put on them in order to just like participate in public life for a while there. I'm sorry, but Democrats and blue cities and states to a far greater degree than red, red ones were the ones saying, actually, here's what you can do and here's what you can't do. And how dare you do that? And we're going to call you, you know, you're going to be uh, snitched on via the, the hotline over here. And we're going to send the cops to break up your gathering. And how dare you, you know, try to clip the, the padlocks on a playground. Like, like for a while there in 2020, 2021, and a little bit of 2022, Democrats were the party of like meddlesome people trying to tell you how to live your life for your own good. Uh, frequently under the guise of kind of suspicious, um, not so airtight science. Have we just like totally forgotten all of this? Uh, 100%. Is... And so yes, it's just we like, have. <laughs> we just, we're, just, we're just fully memory holding it. And now Democrats, do you think they're leaning into the freedom messaging to try to like you're, you're so... erase people's minds further from this and to distract and be like, nope, actually we were never the party of anti-freedom and walking you inside your houses. Now we're the freedom, the freedom folks. First and foremost, I think that we, we've seen, um, if you go back to 1918, 1919, um, after the Spanish flu epidemic in the United States. What you see is like 1919, 1920, gone. People didn't want to talk about it. People didn't want to think about it. Like a lot of media of that era and like from every grade, like let's keep in mind, every every era has its own popular culture. The popular culture of like 1919, 1920, nothing about the Spanish flu epidemic. So like this isn't new, but yes, I do think that people are memory holing COVID. Part where I think that the the COVID hangover might still linger is it's not it's not so conscious, but it's a little bit like when you're saying we're for freedom mm -hmm. uh, to choose your own health care, for instance, it kind of in some people just triggers this instinct of like, well, wait, weren't you the party of vaccine mandates? Uh, like there, there's something that is triggered there that is like, it's, it doesn't quite hit as hard as it used to in, you know, pre 2020. Um, but it is nice to have Democrats embracing freedom as a, as a value. I think mm -hmm. it says something encouraging about the political moment that they're trying to speak that language because it feels like, like freedom. Freedom is a word that they've been scoffing at for decades now, to be honest. Like it, it got a really bad rap during COVID. You had celebrities out there literally saying, fuck your freedoms. Uh, and now we're mm -hmm. giving freedom a big hug again and like em embracing uh, yeah. th this really foundational American concept, which I, I think it is good. Um, but there is a, there is a kind of hollowness to it for me, um, especially because they're going on these long soliloquies, uh, kind of defining freedom in this very specific Democrat way that in some ways jibes with how I look at freedom, but in other ways doesn't in the same ways that Liz was outlining there when you're talking mm -hmm. about guaranteeing some sort of standard of living or type of school or pro union law. Um, any of these things might have their merits, but they're not exactly freedom, which is, you know, why liberty might be the more useful political concept here, because then you're talking about freedom from instead of freedom to do things. But, you know, um, clearly it's being contested and there are some differences in how people think about freedom. I thought, you know, th there's no objective way to measure it, but that hasn't stopped the Cato Institute from trying to measure it. Uh, and I was looking at their freedom in the 50 states index and what they, how they've basically they've separated economic freedom and personal freedom and then synthesized those into overall freedom. And you find states like California, where Kamala Harris hails from, ranked 48. Minnesota, where Tim Walls hails from, ranked 41, bottom of the barrel type of freedom, freedom rankings. Although interestingly, when you go to Cato's rankings of personal freedoms, a lot of that flips and you've got California at 11 and Minnesota in 20 and states like Texas at 50. 
and Florida at 22. Um, and when they're looking at personal freedoms, they're talking about things like incarceration, gambling, gun rights, tobacco freedom, marriage freedom, alcohol freedom. So I'm wondering if this is really the disconnect. We as libertarians like to look at things as freedom as a unified concept. And it may be that the parties are just not willing to tie these two concepts right. together. And you've got to make <laughs> you've got to pick your poison. Hope you enjoyed that clip from Just Asking Questions. You can watch another one here or the full episode there. We have an audio version of the podcast, which you can subscribe to using the link in the description and subscribe to Reason TV for notifications when these episodes go up every Thursday. Hope to see you then.